Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 59 here on season one. Today, we are talking about how do you motivate players on the court slash basketball in general slash just how do you motivate people? And this is how I motivate people. My mouth was kind of dry, just like woke up. So this is how, this is what I, these are my like top three to four reasons or how I would go about motivating a player, an athlete, a employee um, to get stuff done. So first of all, empathy. Empathy is really important. Empathy is like, um, so there's sympathy, which is like, you know, someone's car breaks down and you're like, oh, you know what? I'm sorry that that happened. Like I can definitely, I definitely whatever, feel sad for you or not feel sad, but it's like, yeah, you know what? That sucks. Like whatever, get over it kind of thing. Um, that's sympathy. Sympathy is like, yeah, like I feel like that sucks. I feel sorry for you. Um, empathy though is like, dang, like your car broke down. Like I could definitely feel your sadness. Like I can feel it in here. Um, play a real sport. <laughs> like what? Hockey? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Play hockey. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. Um, definitely. Or you can use this to motivate them how to play hockey. So empathy is like, is the feeling, um, you feel someone else's pain, happiness, all that kind of stuff. So, um, what I have wrote, wrote down is when they're excited, you feel their excitement that you're also excited with them. So for instance, when we're, when we're running and gunning and we're, everything's clicking on our end of the court, um, on, on both ends of the courts or, or both ends of the court for us and they're excited you can see it you can feel it then uh if hockey was easy they would call it basketball hey man that's not true basketball is just as hard as hockey uh i play lacrosse so i definitely i know like a little bit about i know quite a bit about hockey there is nothing easy about playing basketball either um so yeah, when you when you when you when they feel excited, you feel excited when they're when things are not going good, like you have to be realistic. Like I remember um one time we we had lost, we were on a losing streak of like four games in a row and it was just like you could tell their faces, they were just like heads down, like coach is going to ream us kind of thing. And I was like, "Look, like and it was after our game and I we brought up we, we always huddle up after our game and I was like, "Look, guys, like it sucks. Like it's it sucks to lose. Like it sucks for you. It sucks for me. Like I hurt just as much as you do." And I was like, "It's not fun. Like that's the that's re the realistic factor of losing is that it just is not fun. That's why people love to win." But I was like, "It's okay cuz we're going to continue to get better and we're going to we're gonna make the corrections that we need to make to become a a um, competitive team, and that which which leads me to my which leads me to my third point under empathy is that you need to be a strong leader. So, um, so you need to first get excited when they're excited, um, and be realistic about your own feelings. So if you're upset with someone, you know you need to be able to express have the ability to express that with them. Um, there's got to be a lot of like, um, there's got to be a lot of um, grace and peace or grace that go that that blankets kind of your entire team but you got to be a strong leader so that means that stepping up and taking the blame and, and and down here towards the bottom I'll get into more of what it is to be a strong leader I once read this book it's called carrots and sticks don't work but building a culture of employee engagement with principles of respect so this was an outstanding book that I had read and this um, these principles can apply to a basketball team and it does it was written for how to treat employees and how to motivate employees and basically what it's saying is that giving um giving raises and um disciplining your employees is not the best way to motivate them is that respect is the best way to motivate them so for us our practices were from two to four every single day um i respect everybody's time on our team that means practices got out exactly at four we hardly stayed late i think there was like one or two practices that we that we rolled over um, and that was because we were having like a team discussion afterwards. So it rolled rolled over a little bit on two practices, but every other practice, four o'clock, we were done. So every single kid on my on my team knew four o'clock we're done. And we started two, even though we had we were a little bit more lenient on starting at two, 
um, because I had like a pre-practice and then everybody kind of showed up at 2.30 because that's just the way schools were, um, the school times were. So I would have like three players show up at two. We would do individual workouts with them. And then at 2.30 when, when we had um, six guys show up, practice started. So um, respect people's time, respect people's opinions. Um, everybody has their own opinion on how things are going to work. And it's your job as, a, as the coach, as the leader to hear them out and respect their opinion. So even, you know, even if our, our 10th, our 10th player, um, had an idea on how we should be running a play, had an idea on how we're going to win, you know, he had the ability to come to me and voice his opinion. And if I felt that it was going to make our team better, um, I would, I would address that. How do, how do you motivate mental health sufferers? Uh, talking to a wrench. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's pretty much how, that's pretty much that book. Um, and then lastly, when you win, so this is how, this is how what strong, being a strong leader looks like. And this is something that I've, I've heard on um, a few different videos I watch. And this is just something that I think a great coach mimics every single time. So when you win, when your team win, it's because it's not because of your coaching. It's because of how how well they played. And so when you win, you need to put that that winning on them and say, you know what, you guys did a great job. It's all because of you. Um, it's because you guys worked hard during practice. You guys made the plays that counted this week. All this kind of stuff. But when you lose, you need to take that upon yourself and be like you. I like I remember going into huddles and being like, our team just played like crap after the game but it wasn't i i didn't voice that to them i was like you know it's my fault that we lost because i said we could have had a, we should have ha had a stronger practice we didn't practice against this style of defense we practiced against a different one that i had thought we were going to see we had done this in practice and there's a lot of stuff that we're going to fix as co as the coaching staff before going into the next week so it's our fault so it's okay you know you guys gave it you're all out there and you know, if you felt like you didn't leave something on the court, then you the next time you know that you need to give more effort. However, it's I said you guys weren't coached the right way this week, and so going into next week, we got a lot of stuff to fix. But don't worry, we still got time, and we're still going to be able to fix it. So that's my top three ways to motivate players on the court, business, or motivate employees, or motivate. Um, just basketball players or any kind of athlete in general. So you got to have empathy, which means feeling excited when they're excited. Be realistic about when you're losing. Be realistic about what what the atmosphere is like. So as a coach, you got to be able to have that empathy. Next, I would suggest reading the book called Carrot Sticks Don't Work. Build a culture of employee engagement with principles of respect and apply those principles in that book to your team. And then lastly, being a strong leader or being a strong coach is when you lose, it's because of you and you have to fix the problem. But when you win, when your team wins, it's because of them. So it's because of their hard work. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive into the question of the day. And the question of the day is, why is the earth round and not flat? Well, um... First of all, the water has to stay on the earth somehow because if it was a flat, the water would run off unless they're on the very edges of the earth. There was like these walls that kept the water in play. So that's number one reason why the earth is round because then the water can actually stay on the earth by gravity. However, if it was flat, the water would run off the edges and then there would be no civilization. So technically, we wouldn't have be having this talk. Uh... Other than that, I think that because of the way that the um, universe kind of travels in circles and stuff like that, I think it makes more sense for everything to be round and circular and kind of ball shaped than for it does to be like we have just these maps moving around. Like how crazy would that be? Like, hey, look, it's Jupiter over there. It's just like a flat, big block in the sky. You're like, wow, that square is Jupiter. Oh, and that one over there, that rectangle is Saturn. And you're like, okay, like that's cool. <laughs> So anyways, I think it makes the world a better place, and I think it makes our universe a better place. Anyways, if you guys haven't answered that question, go ahead and post it down below. And if you guys have any questions about basketball-related topics, I would love to tackle those on the next episode. But until next time, 
Don't forget to subscribe up here. Check out why we love to run the 131 press. And then check out this other cool video right here. And until next time, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it.